meeting is being recorded. I'm seeing people coming back, so I'm going to put this. And unless I hear anyone, I am assuming you can hear me and see this presentation that is taking a while to load. Great. Uh, so welcome back, everyone. I hope you had lots of fun in the breakout rooms. Is one of my favorite time of the wiki workshop so i really hope you enjoy that uh, so i'm very happy to start the first session of our research program today before i start i want to take well 20 seconds to really um celebrate this amazing community so every year we see the number of contributions to this workshop growing and the authors put lots of love in the in their papers that our reviewers um, really do a wonderful job. So I am very pleased to celebrate how amazing the com this community is. So thank you everyone for being here, for contributing to this workshop as a reviewer, author, a participant, you're making this uh, workshop enjoyable for everyone. So thank you very much. So again, uh, I thought last year we had a record number of submissions, but this year we broke that record again. So um, we had more than uh, uh, 31 submissions. And um, we, out of these submissions, we accepted 25 papers to this workshop. Uh, since we have so many uh, papers now, we partition this into two sessions. You will hear three live presentations of about uh, seven minutes. Um, and then for the live presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask one question live uh, we will have chairs that will deal with uh, sorry um, moderators q a moderators that will deal with uh, uh, questions in the queue um and then you will uh, you will see in between seven and nine spotlight presentations in uh, the in a form of beautiful videos that our authors sent us um uh, again, as I said, if you have questions for our authors, either the live presentations or the video presentations, please put them in the chat or in the notes doc. And in, if we don't have time to ask them during this session, the poster session chairs will ask them to the authors during the, during the poster sessions. So please don't hesitate to ask questions. If we don't have room for you now, we will take, we will, make sure that your questions are um, uh, relied to the authors. Um, there is a detailed papers schedule for this uh, for today. Um, I, if you want to see it, I, I can't put the link in the chat, but I will do it as soon as I close this um, uh, slide deck. I Before I uh, leave the stage to our authors, I really want to thank again everyone for being part of this. Uh, all, authors and reviewers, PC members who gave them their love to this research program. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's lots of high quality research that you will see in the next couple of hours. So without further ado, further ado I am going to start with the first session of oral presentations. Um, please refer to Tiziano for um, uh, questions if I'm not wrong. Um, and the first presenter who I invite on stage to share the screen is Karina Nugrianu, who is- Hi. Hi, good. Hi, Karina. Uh, please, I am going to stop sharing. You can share the screen while, uh, while I introduce you. Um, you are going to talk about rows from many sources, how to enrich row completions from Wikidata with a pre-trained language model. Karina, the floor is yours. Awesome. I hope you can see my screen and hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. OK, we're good to go. Uh, so hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our first talk, which is Rows from Many Sources and Reaching Row Completions from Wikidata with a pre-trained language model. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Uh, I am Karina, and I will be presenting this work on behalf of our collaborators, Alp, Jack, Shuang, Danny, Andy, and Chinyu. So we are part of Microsoft Research, and our common research interest is tabular data, and in particular, how we can infuse tabular data with knowledge. Okay, so say that you want to create a table about rap artists, and your favorite friend sent you a snippet, uh, about this subject. The goal of our project is to automatically extend tables like these such that users can build upon complete data and conduct meaningful analysis. So to be able to add a row about Kendrick Lamar, we need to do a few things. So first, we need to link the table so we know what the columns and cells represent, which is known as table interpretation. Then we need to be able to add new subjects, such as uh, Kendrick Lamar, which is called subject suggestion. And then we have to fill in the remainder of the row, which is called gap filling. So throughout this talk, we will show you output from our pipeline, which to our knowledge is the first one that targets this task, row completion end to end. And also we, I think we are the first ones to target Wikidata instead of DBpedia or Freebase. So we have been dealing with different challenges uh, compared to our community. So at the end of table interpretation, uh, we can link all the entities in the first column to Wikidata. We can detect their join type, which is human, and we can figure out that the second column represents pseudonyms and the third column dates of birth. So unfortunately, we have no idea what column B represents at this stage. And for this work, we basically use our prior system with minor tweaks. Oh. Okay, so in order to suggest Kendrick Lamar, we first end up generating loads of potential candidates and then we rank them. So for Kendrick Lamar is a top suggestion produced by our pipeline. And then we generate candidates from two sources. So first we make use of empty representations from an embedding space trained on Wikidata triples. And this is called PyTorch Graph or PBG in short, that basically puts similar entities close to each other in distance wise. And it turns out that this method alone is awesome. It's really reliable, but we want to improve recall further. So basically this method doesn't give you all the candidates you want. And for that, we basically end up sourcing candidates using GPT-3's intrinsic knowledge. So GPT-3 is a language model, it's a fairly popular one, and we wanted to try it out in this project. So in order to do this, we first identify properties to build a rich prompt. So we have to prompt the language model and ask it to continue our statement. Uh, so we create example sentences from each row in the original table or a subset of rows. So in this case, we would say something like Kanye West has pseudonym easy and has date of birth 1977, Marshall Matters, and we continue. And then GPT-3 offers you a sentence about Kendrick Lamar. But this method is not, um, you know, it's not foolproof and we have some issues. So first sourcing from PBG is computationally expensive. Um, so we need to come up with a way to limit the search space like property sharding. Uh, basically the list of entities we retrieve can be incomplete because some entities might be triple poor or they don't get embedded optimally. So in this case, we need to come up with something else because the things that you actually want are far away in the graph when they got embedded. On the other hand, we found that GPT-3 on its own has high variability, which makes it quite unreliable, which is not good enough for our purposes. So to make it more consistent, we can lower the temperature of the language model, but that's significant recall, which is the whole point. So what we did was to basically combine generations from PBG and GPT-3 uh, to create basically features from these two spaces and then use a ranker. Uh, so we basically explored the wide range of rankers and with various complexities, but we found that for these purposes, uh, things like VAE based rankers are too rich and things that are simple like XGBOL are quite good. Uh, so they are both computationally efficient and have good results. Uh, this kind of led us to get a boost of over 10% for prior art when we looked at average recall among generations. Okay. Right, so now we have Kendrick Lamar as a candidate, we want to basically be able to add its properties. So for gap filling, we first attempt to retrieve the property value directly because Wikidata is very reliable. 
And here we can retrieve basically the values in column B and column C because we have identified there about its pseudonym and its date of birth, and these both exist in the in Wikidata. But we don't know what column B represents. So what we do is we basically build an alliteration that guides GPT-3 to source the value we're keen on. So in this case, it looks something like A is to B, uh, C is to blank, and now GPT-3 fills in the blank. In this case, you'll be something like Marshall Matters is to, Andrew, is to New York, as Andrew Young is to Detroit, as Kendrick Lamar is to, and actually GPT-3 fills in Glendale. So now we have this approach. Uh, we use this approach in two cases. When we cannot identify the property in the table, be it because our linker is not good enough, or because there's no property in Wikidata, like in this case, there's no property it had concert in, or in the case where the property value is missing from Wikidata. Uh, but even though our prompt gets us a completion, they are not necessarily trustworthy, and they're definitely not trustworthy enough to show to a user. So even though our, um, so what we do is that basically we try and link back the completion to a trusted web source, like Wikipedia or news articles, and we do so by first extracting a loose context from the current rows uh, by looking at web sources that say contain Eminem in New York, Dr. Dre in Atlanta, and we end up finding that it's basically something about concerts. And then we look for a source that contains Kendrick Lamar and Glendale. And if the context is similar enough uh, to the loose context we previously found, AKA it's about recent concerts, we can state that it's likely a match. And also we can basically pinpoint the source that we think that GPT-3 learned from. So using this approach led to a whopping 15% recall improvement over prior art and a significant reduction in hallucinations. So basically we managed to block out the things GPT-3 hallucinated like random years or random events. Um, so yeah, this is what we did in our project uh, for this workshop. And uh, please reach out with any question and thank you for listening. Andy Gordon and I are in the audience. Uh, so please address either one of us with any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, one question. So first of all, thank you for the presentation. There's one question from audience uh, about uh, uh, possible biases uh, that can be introduced by GP3. That is a known issue. Yes, uh, so we have that problem. We have actually done a bit of work on it. Um, we were trying to look for this. Um, it turns out it's a hard problem. And one, one is because it's kind of depends on what it learned. So for instance, we use GPT-3 heavily. If we use it for gap filling, that should not introduce biases because you're just filling in the remaining properties. But when suggesting a, a subject that does highly bias it, we have found that is the case. So for instance, if there's a list of artists um, that uh, say rap artists, in this case, you would always, always show a male artist. Um, so, or someone who identifies as a male artist. Um, and in that case, that is a significant issue. Uh, and in that way, actually PBG as like going through the embedding space a lot better because if the Wikidata knowledge graph is unbiased, then that means that this will become less biased as well. So that's definitely something to take into account. Okay. Uh, I don't know, Miriam, do we have time or are we um, Unfortunately, I am so okay. sorry to cut this, but oh. we need to go to the next presenters. Okay, Just, there are uh, a lot of questions, so you will get- Oh, great, later. great. So um, Karina, you'll have time to answer this question in the, in the post session. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, Puyu, you're next. You're, if you, Karina, if you could kindly stop sharing the screen so we can have Puyu Young on you. stage. Puyu Young is going to present a paper with Giovanni Coravizza on a map of science of Wikipedia. This is going to be in the knowledge integrity poster session. Um, Puyu, I've seen you, I know you. Can you share your screen? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Please. Uh, can you see that? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Pui. Uh, I'm glad to be here to introduce our research, a map of science in Wikipedia with you. In recent decades, the rapid growth of internet adoption is offering opportunities for convenient and inexpensive access to scientific information. However, a clear understanding of the scientific sources support Wikipedia's contents remains elusive. So in this work, we are going to explore Wikipedia's role in the public understanding of science from the perspective of its scientific sources. We rely on an open data site of citations from Wikipedia and use network analysis to map the relationship between Wikipedia articles and the scientific journal articles. Here are our research questions. What scientific sources are cited from Wikipedia? and what will on Wikipedia emerge, what will on science emerge. Answering these questions is critical to inform the community work on improving Wikipedia by finding and filling knowledge gaps and bias. All the same guaranteeing the quality and diversity of the sources Wikipedia relies on. Our data contains 29 million a million citations from 6 million articles in Wikipedia English version, snapshotted in May 2020. You could find more details about this data site from this link. Before showing the result, I'd like to give a brief introduction of our network's approach. In this article, uh, we mainly use two networks, bibliographic coupling network and consultation network. Here, the first line represents Wikipedia articles, and the second line is their citations. In bibliographic coupling network, if two Wikipedia articles cite the same citations, we create a link between these two articles. Similarly, in consultation network, if two scientific articles are cited by the same Wikipedia article, we make a connection between these two scientific articles. So. What scientific sources are cited from Wikipedia? In our data, we have 2.5 million journal articles and we plot a Sankey diagram to show the flow from Wikipedia articles to scientific discipline. Obviously, most citations go from STEM Wikipedia articles to biology and medicine. This flow confirms the importance of biological, med 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 medical and health science in Wikipedia where other topics are more evenly distributed uh, across fields of research. Now, let's see the network distribution. To understand Wikipedia from a science perspective, we use bibliographic coupling network and colored by its author's topics and the number of top 10 clusters in the network. Below, we also list top four wiki projects in the top three clusters. Combine these two plots. Firstly, uh, we could see the systematic importance of STEM, and then its geography. Secondly, biographies and history play an important role in connecting STEM to the rest of Wikipedia. Also, for the consultation network, we visualize it using the same layout and different coloring by major field of research. The results are consi consistent with what we previously discussed. The dominance of biology and medicine as the two top fields cited from Wikipedia. Because of the time, we just saw some main results here and you could also find more anal analysis in our paper. A limitation could be seen is that we only focus on Wikipedia English version and only for journal articles, and we use the snapshot data. And for now, we are going to do studies of open science and media sources in Wikipedia. If you have any interest, if you are interested in any parts, please feel free to contact us. And thanks for your listening. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, there is one question uh, about uh, um, if you experiment with, by, with removing uh, 
stubs or bot generated articles because in some languages uh, uh, there can be a large uh, number of um, uh, consistent set of sources that are added by bots and that are uh, typically from the same uh, database did you look into it uh so you mean seeing different language version or um no, no there are some you you focus only on english right yeah yeah okay okay do you know if uh, uh, there is uh, any automatic uh, uh, creation of uh, references yeah i can maybe say something about this yeah. Uh, Puyo, if you if if you don't mind, so the um, the data set that we use is published in another paper, and uh, um, and that includes also uh, quite a measure of automatically generated uh, citations, and actually uh, those are uh, from a very preliminary investigation, which is not thorough and should happen in the future, I, I believe. Um, uh, these bots help a lot, uh, for example, by adding uh, identifiers to papers which is very important to, to conduct the studies that we have done. Uh, but to go back to the question, uh, so yes, uh, the, this study includes automatically generated citations. And no, we haven't, uh, we haven't developed a study specifically on, on their impact. Thank you. Miriam? Thanks. Yes, Titana, just because we're running a little bit late, let's do like we did with Karina. Anything else will be asked in the yeah. post session. And sure. we go to the next presenter, um, Kartik. I've seen you before. So if you could kindly start sharing your screen, I'm going to introduce you. Yes, Kartik Madangna Gopal and James Covery are presenting Improving Linguistic Bias Detection in Wikipedia using Cross-Domain Adaptive for Training. Kartik, the floor is yours. Thanks, Miriam. Hello, everyone. I'm Kartik Madhana Gopal, PhD student in the Department of Computer Science, Texas A&M University. Uh, today, I'm going to actually present our work on improving linguistic bias detections in Wikipedia using Cross-Domain Adaptive Pre-Training Approach. One of the key guiding principles of Wikipedia is neutral point of view, which requires all content to be written fairly, proportionately, and as far as possible without any editorial bias. But still, editors may knowingly or unknowingly uh, create bias in their uh, articles. Maintaining a neutral point of view can be challenging for new contributors and experienced editors. So there are various types of bias that can be introduced in the objective treatment of facts. In this work, we concentrate on the bias that is introduced by the subject to language in presenting the information. Here are some examples of the biased statements we have identified in Wikipedia. Framing bias is an explicit form of bias that reveals the author's stance on a particular topic by the use of one-sided or subjective words. On the other hand, epistemological bias can be extremely difficult because it's a kind of an implicit or a subtle form of bias that tends to cast a doubt in the reader's mind. So the goal of this research is to accurately identify all these different types of language induced bias and help the editors in objectively present the facts. Several previous studies have proposed automated systems to detect biased statements. All these efforts have mainly focused on either manually constructing bias lexicons or solely focused on Wikipedia itself as a training data. Most of these methods were able to detect uh, simple forms of framing and a uh, missed majority of the epistemological biases. The inability of the lexicon-based and syntax-driven approaches to encrypt sentence semantics led to misclassifications of certain subtle and implicit forms of epistemological biases. Due to the change in the editor's writing style that we commonly see in Wikipedia and their behaviors over time, these methods were not able to sustain their performance over a long period of time. After analyzing the results of these methods, we identified majority of the misclassified biased statements in Wikipedia belong to language and literature, politics and government and sports. With an effort to build a robust bias classifier that can detect subtle forms of bias and also continue to perform well for a longer period of time, we devised a cross-domain pre-training approach. First, we, in order to expand our coverage for domain independent expressions related to judgments, interpretations, we did a data augmentations by leveraging annotated data sets 
from other subjectivity rich domains like politics and op opinions like news articles and product reviews and things like that. Additionally, we used deep transformer models like BERT that can capture language patterns related to common writing styles and expressions that is imposed in subject to views. In combinations of data augmentation and deep transformer models enabled our classifier to detect biased statements by understanding the meaning of the statements in the context rather than using the keywords that is mentioned, you know, mentioned in it. Our training data set contains NPOV statements extracted from Wikipedia, edit histories, uh, news related biased statements extracted from MPQA corpus that contains statements expressing the, uh, the author's private states like beliefs, emotions, sentiments, and speculations. Also, we added the political ideology statements extracted from IBC corpus. To train our bias classifier, we leveraged a contextualized language model called Roberta that can efficiently encode the meaning of text into a vector form that is efficient for training a text classifier. Also, instead of directly fine tuning a Roberta classifier, we used an adaptive pre-training approach that led to a superior performance in detecting biased statements. In our cross-domain adaptive pre-training approach, we downloaded the Roberta deep transformer model that was already trained on large volumes of text extracted from eBooks and news articles. Then we performed a continual pre-training to actually make the model more towards understanding the subject to language that's coming from other domains and things like that. The continual pre-training is to adapt our pre-trained model to subject to writing styles that is required for our study. Then we added a final layer to a continual pre-trained pre robot model and fine-tuned it to classify the biased statements using annotated bias corpus. To study the importance of our deep transformer model, we first trained the bias classifier only using Wikipedia corpus. The lexicon-based model had a better recall because it was plainly looking at for the keyword and classifying the statements as bias without understanding the meaning. But the transformer-based classifier had a better classification accuracy of 77%. This shows that the transformer-based models are powerful enough to learn domain-specific statements and structures that are relevant for detecting language-induced subject to bias. To demonstrate the value of our cross-domain tree training, we trained the best model in a previous experiment using three different combinations of cross-domain training corpus. The transformer model trained with all the data sets combined had a better performance of 89% accuracy, which is 19% improvement in accuracy than the baseline models. We learned that the performance of these cross-domain models depend on the amount of knowledge overlap that I'm sorry, yeah. The amount of knowledge overlap that had with the domains that we are actually trying to mix. These results show that the proposed approach detects biased statements in Wikipedia more accurately than existing state-of-the-art models by leveraging rich pre-trained language models and fine-tuned it with cross-domain training corpus. To understand the performance of a bias classifier, we also applied the same model on other domains apart from Wikipedia. And we observed 12% improvement in classification accuracy on the MPQ opinion corpus. And uh, interestingly, the performance of a model on the IBC, which is more on the political speech, did not go well. Because again, depending on the geographies, the political speech changes because there are some immigration issues, tax related issues, low income families. And there are so much of uh, pre presumptive statements in political speeches that our model was not able to capture it. We're still continuing to improve our model to actually understand the meanings of these different noun phrases that are coming through these presumptive statements to improve our bias detection accuracy. I'm happy to discuss more in detail during our poster sessions. Please visit our virtual booth number one. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. So we have a couple of questions that are uh, on uh, more or less the same topic, uh, yeah, specifically about the uh, moving target nature of the problem. Uh, do you have some uh, example of uh, the changes in editor behavior or subjective writing in, uh, over time that can degrade the model? And uh, why the cross-domain adaptive pre-train uh, should mitigate the problem? Yeah, uh, specifically, it's a very good question. So uh, I have one specific example that I've actually seen. Uh, this is because I'm from US, most of the things I'm looking into it from the US political speech point of view. So after this, uh, the, the storming of the US Capitol, so we kind of trained the model between uh, nine, 2000 and 
2005 and 2015, and we took the model and tried to apply it on articles that came after 2015. What we have seen is our model is, uh, most of the previous models were not able to actually detect the change in the way, because most of the times, this is what is smart about editors. Once they see their article is actually flagged for the NPOV board, they start to tweak the tra mod, the, their writing in a way that this diocese is getting more and more subtle, but it still exists. So our models need to actually learn over time. But the model we trained was able to actually consistently perform for the next six years of time. That is a good, that's, that's what kind of helped us to understand, is this model improving or not? Is it able to capture future writing style? And again, our data augmentation is moving towards that. If we try to use Wikipedia itself as a source to train our model, it won't come forward and it won't be able to detect future things. By incorporating data from political speeches outside of Wikipedia, product reviews and things like that, we were able to induce how a biased writing more will look like. So in future, if someone tries to get some of those writing style into it, we will be able to catch it. So that's that's one of the main reasons why this model is able to do well. Okay, Miriam, I think uh, we can move on. Sorry, I didn't want to disrupt. I just wanted to get ready for the next bit. Thank you so much, uh, Tiziano um, and Kartuk. I um, need to uh, move the session forward. Uh, so thank you so much for the three of you for the beautiful presentations. You'll have time to discuss during the post sessions. Um, I am going now to play about 16, 17 minutes video where you will see all the lighting talks for all the others, other papers in the section. session. I hope you enjoy it. And if you can't hear it, uh, the audio, please, can someone tell me, would be great. Enjoy. Hello, I am Bart Magnus. I work for Memo, and I will guide you through the main steps of using the public domain tool. It is a tool meant for cultural heritage organizations to define whether their collection items belong to the public domain and this tool automates that process. First of all, you need the QID of your organization. You need the CSV file containing an export of your data, containing typical information like type of objects, like the author, like birth date, death date, external identifiers. The more you have, the better, but none of them is, uh, is actually necessary to use the tool. Um, you upload that CSV to the system and then you get back, back another CSV uh, with suggestions of the data items corresponding to the uh, authors of your works. This is where the manual work needs to be done. You need to check whether the suggestions are correct. Correct suggestions just stay in the CSV. Those that are not correct should be deleted. Once that's finished, you upload the CSV again to the system. And you get back a CS an enriched CSV with data pulled from Wikidata. You see much more birth dates and death dates here, for example. You see uh, QIDs for each and every author. You also see the copyright status of each work, either public domain, um, copyright protected, or unknown. At the same time, data have been added to Wikidata as well, based on the collection data. For example, professions are being added, uh, birth dates, death dates, always um, while making reference to the to the source of these data. So this is it more or less. Um, please feel free to ask a question. Hello everyone and welcome to this session. I am Reda Van Khadra and this is a joint work with Anna Sandrati entitled Are Democratic User Groups More Inclusive? In this paper, we investigate a particular online community structure, Wikimedia user groups, and answer the question of democracy and its relation with inclusivity in these groups. The background of this research starts from us, being both co-founders of a national user group, having been strongly involved in the Wikipedia ecosystem and its governance. We have noticed several conflicts and discussions about the lack of inclusivity in user groups that could originate from an undemocratic context. 
Building on earlier research work from one of the co-authors, we wanted to understand if indeed democracy was the solution to obtain more inclusive user groups. From this work, we used a strong theoretical ground to define the different central elements and be able to conduct a thorough mapping and analysis. Our final findings show that there is no strong correlation between both concepts, as democracy is not always the solution for the inclusivity challenges that were identified in certain Wikimedia user groups, and that inclusivity issues need to be addressed through other recommendations and means. To the best of our knowledge, this paper represents a first attempt to tackle governance-related issues in Wikimedia user groups. We believe that this work can lay good grounds to enable further research in the matter, but also on general questions related to digital democracy that are within the interest areas of the world. Further research can check other issues apart from inclusivity and other challenges related to volunteering, such as burnout. Thank you for your attention. Hello, I'm Jean Dupuis, and with Adrien Guy and Julien Jacques, we're happy to present the modeling approach at the Wiki Workshop. Since the emergence of the World Wide Web, hyperlinks have become the backbones of the network, and Wikipedia is no exception. Actually, hyperlinks are pretty central in Wikipedia, as they allow users to perform horizontal reading, leading to a better contextualization of contents. Hyperlinks are written by contributors and take the following form. On the left part, we found the target document, and on the right part, the more from the link. Moving on this part, the end goal. Our goal is the following. Starting with a document network consisting only of technical contributors and hyperlinks, we aim to build a model which can predict words that are more susceptible to carry an hyperlinks toward a given document. In other words, we want to predict anchors between a pair of Wikipedia pages. This model may be used to easily lots of contributors by recommending hyperlinks during the redaction phase. It may also be beneficial for some readers, as this system could insert contextual hyperlinks based on previously seen contents, acting like an assisting reading system. We call this model contextualized relational topic model. As the name implies, the name is a relational model built to take into account the relation between documents. It models anchors by the conjunction of an attention mechanism which permits to better estimate the importance of each topic and the use of additional parameters, helping to learn a new hidden representation more fitted to the anchor prediction task. You can learn that in English, German, and Italian, on an anchor prediction task, link prediction task, both with previous studies, and give qualitative examples. Experiments show that, besides being language agnostic and computationally right, our model gives good results in anchor prediction, both qualitatively and quantitatively. It seems to be also suitable for a link prediction task. Thank you for listening. We will be happy to discuss this work during the post session. The Center Perspective in Wikipedia, a content and participation challenge. This work is done by four different professors of three different universities in, in Catalonia, Spain. I'm Nuri Ferran Ferrer, the corresponding author. Wikipedia is one of the most widely used information sources in the world. Although one of the guiding pillars of this digital platform is ensuring access to the diversity of human knowledge from a neutral point of view, there is a clear and persistent gender bias in terms of content about or contributed by women. The challenge is to include women as equal partners in the public sphere in which Wikipedia is developing a central role as the most used educational resource among students, professionals and many other profiles. In this paper, we introduce the gender perspective in the analysis of the gender gap in the content and participation of women in Wikipedia. While most students focus on one of the two dimensions in which the gender gap has been observed, we reveal both approaches to provide an overview of the available evidence. Firstly, we introduce how the gender gap is framed by the Wikimedia movement strategy. 
Then we evaluate the gender gap on content and participation, especially regarding editor practices. Finally, we provide some insights to broaden the discussion about the consequences of not addressing the gender gap in Wikipedia. And we provide some research topics that can support the generation of recommendations and guidelines for a community that needs both equity and diversity. Hi. This is an overview of the work on utilizing language model props for knowledge graph repair. Knowledge graphs, as we all know, are an important asset for machine knowledge. Web scale knowledge graphs like Yago, DBpedia, and Wikidata are constructed manually, semi automatically, and automatically. They contain billions of SPO triples, such as Paris is the capital of France. It is inevitable, however, that these large knowledge graphs contain wrong information for a variety of reasons. In this example, we see extractions of the Wikipedia triples about the entity Jessica Mowick from her Wikipedia info box. While her field was successfully extracted, namely marine science, her alma mater was mistaken for the city where the university is located, causing an error in the knowledge graph. In this work, we propose fixing predefined wrong triples without losing information by replacing incorrect components of the triple by the correct ones. We do so using context augmented language model probing. We identify this context and measure its relevancy from the input KG itself. For example, to fix the triple about Alma Mater Montreal, one way of probing the language model is to simply mask the incorrect component in the triple and request an alternative. In this case, all the predictions are incorrect, especially that Jessica Moog is a long tail entity. Instead, we augment the probe with salient context about her from the knowledge graph itself, like her profession and country of origin. In this case, we obtain more accurate answers where the top prediction is actually correct. Please check the paper for more details about the methodology and systematic experiments on the Wikipedia and Wikidata. Thank you. Hi. Furthering automatic speech recognition or ASR, research and application is more relevant to uh, real world human computer interactions. People with disabilities and young and older people alike require the ability to listen to and speak to their computing devices. Foundation for ASR for languages with limited resources is human uh, speech data and is often absent or is not enough. So new speech data has to be open and affordable. Take the example of my own language, Odia. Despite being the official language of an Indian state with 45 million speakers, very little speech data is available under open licenses. Such issues are worse in languages with lesser resources and they hamper speech research and development. Using an open source and online web app uh, lingua libre, I could record up to um, or over 400 words in a day. I could expand the topics by constantly collecting words from the Odia Wikipedia, online news sites, uh, a science magazine, and a 1930s lexicon. By building a workflow, I could expand to a repository of speech recordings of um, 55,000 unique words in Odia, including over 5,000 words in the northern dialect of Balatsuri. These recordings are available under a public domain dedication and are perpetually free for anyone to use. Um, so my key learning, first, um, creating a word list containing unique words in a language is critical for any speech data project. Diversifying these topics, um, these words fall under by looking at uh, all available sources even, is even more critical. Second, um, think of ways to expand the diversity. Finding speakers of various uh, genders, sources containing various topics and words from different eras help a lot. Even though the first launch, like mine, might include only one speaker of a particular gender. Third, uh, document your process. That helps others. I've tried to document some such uh, resources under the ambit of the Open uh, Speaks project, uh, an open and multimedia documentation project that I had founded for low and medium resource languages. Fourth, uh, encourage speakers to record words of their dialects if such words exist. Dialects are often neglected due to lack of resources. Lastly, using an open license helps others build further research on your speech data. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Wojciech Mishkinonyowski, and I will briefly describe you the results of our recent research. As we know, 
information in Wikipedia should be based on reliable sources. But nowadays there are over a billion websites on the internet and only a very small part of them are assessed by Wikipedia community in special pages. Moreover, the reliability of the same source in Wikipedia depends on a topic and language version. Additionally, the reliability assessment may change over time. The purpose of this study is to identify reliable sources on a specific topic, COVID-19 pandemic. So we decided to find which of the sources are reliable for Wikipedia based on analysis of its content in different months. To do so, we search for references in Wikicode of the selected Wikipedia articles in each considered month. Some references were not placed directly into the code of the articles, so we also analyzed how the content of special templates changed in the selected period. To select Wikipedia articles on COVID-19 pandemic, we can use different approaches. For example, in Wikidata, we can find items on a specific topics based on statements. Then, we can find the titles of related Wikipedia articles. We also can use Wikipedia that extracts structured information from Wikipedia info boxes. After extraction of the URL addresses in references, we used the public suffix list to detect which level of domain indicates the source. In our recent study, we proposed 10 models related to popularity and reliability assessment of the source. We used some of them and also proposed a new one. This figure presents results of assessment of the web sources on COVID-19 pandemic in English Wikipedia in each month. We also analyzed the reliability trends in other languages. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. In this presentation, I will highlight the potential of Wikipedia knowledge graphs as job interview kits. Job interview is an important step in HR recruitment process, yet it's not standardized, especially in the computer science related fields. The problem, which includes scalability, gets more difficult in the age of globalization where applicants come from diverse backgrounds. We can argue that knowledge graphs such as Wikipedia can be used to build interactive interview kits with the objective of linking knowledge entities. Under the premise that knowledgeable navigation is shorter than randomly picked passes. As I try to demonstrate with a simple example here, Alice was able to have an assessment of Bob's knowledge of the topic and also see his thought process. Bob, on the other hand, was able to demonstrate his prowess. Here I list some of the important future works and this concludes the presentation. Comments, suggestions, and feedbacks are gladly welcome. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all authors, for these uh, videos. I believe we're going for a five minute break. Um, Emily, if you can confirm, I think there is a timer at some point. Don't go anywhere because there will be live music when you're back. So be sure that you are around in five minutes because we're going to have lots of fun. Thank you everyone for your videos and presentations and you will have the opportunity to answer any questions in the post session. Thank you very much.
while we are on break, yes, thank you, Emily. While we are on break, uh, Ugne, I saw you joined. Hello. I can't hear you, speaker. Can you hear me now? I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Yes. Now Just a quick. Just a quick note that we're going to, to this four minute break and then we will come back for a 10 minute music with Ugne. So if you want to just get out and stretch, do that. Um, do you hear me now, Miriam? Uh, do you hear me? Ugne, if you can raise the volume of your. Um, yes. Do you think audio? I think it's still red, a bit low. One, two, one, two, do you hear me? Oh, now, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, great. Hello, Mira. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I am good. We were testing uh, the some um, audio with Ugne, who is going to play live. OK, OK. OK? I'm sorry I joined late. I'm no sorry. problem. I hope no I'm able to get the recording. No problem. You will see the recording. You will watch the recording. and. You still have lots of content to go through today. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ugne, sorry. And do you hear my guitar? I hear it perfectly. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, let me see if Diego is around. Maybe he can also confirm that he hears it as we should hear it. <laughs> but I mean, people are on a break, but I, I hear yes. you. Yes. Is it, is, it, is it the correct audio we should hear? It's a bit low now, but yeah, uh, if you can increase a bit the volume, Ugne, I think it would be great. Yeah, can you hear it better now? Yeah, much better. Nice. And the guitar as well. Perfect. Yeah, that was a bit low. So, not thank too. you, Ugne. So, I'll basically, once this timer is uh, gone, we're going to put you in spotlight, which means that you will be on everyone's screen, full screen. Yeah. And I'll briefly introduce you. Now you are famous in this community, so I don't think you need, you know, a oh, big interest. <laughs> but I'll, I'll introduce you, and then, yeah, the floor is yours. Uh, Last time, people asked to share links of some of the songs you will sing, so probably it will happen again. Uh, maybe we can do it afterwards. Uh, okay, sure I'll make sure to have them so we'll get excited. Um, is there anything you need from us? I think the audio is good. I see you, the video. I, I mean, if you hear me well, um, yes, yes. I'm great. Good, good, good. So, I think one minute. Let me see. I'm letting people in. Um, Emily, is there anything else I should do? Because I'm not following all the instruction, but I think it's, we're good, right? Yeah, we're good. Good, okay. Emily, sorry, can you stop the recording? Because I think we can't record the music. Yes, I'll make sure I stop it before Ugna starts. Sounds good. Okay. Countdown to Ugnes music. I'm gonna let you stop the recording and then I'll introduce 